so that's the complete install really really simple now one thing i'm going to do one thing i always do before i start planting what's up lazy dog fam I hope everybody out there is having a wonderful day it's october 1st here in southwest georgia and it's finally time to do some fall planting we got a nice cool breezy day out here today i've looked at the forecast for the next two weeks doesn't look like we're supposed to get over 85 so i feel comfortable going ahead and putting some fall transplants in the ground so today we're going to be working in this plot here right behind me this is a plot that we converted to no-till about a year ago just layering compost on top of the native soil there so i'm going to walk you through the entire installation process of setting up a drip irrigation system for an in-ground garden like we're going to have right here we're going to set up our drip system put our tape in the ground and then hopefully get some of these fall transplants planted so let's start out with the drip installation on this 30 by 35 plot and it's pretty simple everything we're going to need is sitting right here except that little watering can we won't be needing that but all the pieces and fittings and everything for this plot are sitting right here in the back of the buggy and all the pieces for this system that we'll be installing today are on a blog on our website at lazydogfarm.com if you're watching on youtube i'll put a link to that blog below that way you can easily access all the links for all the pieces you're going to need so the first thing we need to do is lay out our main line tubing or our supply line for our drip system and we want to lay this out so it sits perpendicular to the direction that our rows are going to go now i use a 5 8 or half inch main line tubing some websites will call it 5 8 because they're referring to the outside diameter some websites will call it half inch because they're referring to the inside diameter but it's the same thing now if you're doing rows longer than 100 foot long you'll have to use a larger mainline tubing but none of my rows are over 40 foot long so that's why i use this 5 8 or a half inch tubing so we've got our mainline tubing set there perpendicular to the direction of our rows which are going to go like you see that row of peppers planted there now it's not a bad idea to come out here and do this a day before you intend on installing the rest of the system sometimes this tubing can have a little bit of memory from being coiled up in its packaging and letting it sit out in the sun will make it lay straight a lot better so now we need to put together the few pieces that are going to go into that main line at the start of our drip irrigation system basically where our water hose is hooking up to so we're going to start out with a filter here so our water hose will hook up right here on this swivel on this filter we open this up we can see the actual filter inside of here you can pull it out of there and wash it out from time to time so you definitely need a filter if you're running drip tape that's going to keep any you know hard particles in your water or any sand or grit stuff like that from getting in the tape and clogging those little pores in the tape so on the filter our water hose goes here and then on this side of the filter it's got a little arrow pointing the flow direction that's where we need to install our pressure regulator now i'm using a 10 psi pressure regulator that's rated for a flow rate of a half gallon a minute to seven gallons a minute now if you have more than seven gallons a minute coming out your well you need to step up to a higher rated pressure regulator but i don't have that so these here work just fine and this is going to screw on to the end of this filter just like this now when i put this all together in a minute i'm going to use pipe tape around these or teflon tape to make sure they're secure but i'm just putting it together now to show you how it goes so we have one end of our pressure regulator connected to the filter and on the other end we're going to install this t and the reason we use a t instead of just a straight connection here is the t allows us to put this setup in the middle of our main line so we get a better water distribution there you can put it on the end but i've always liked to put it in the center so this piece here basically screws on to the end and get it on there there we go of the pressure regulator and this is going to sit in the center of our main line we'll hook our water hose up here so the water is going to come through here through this filter through the pressure regulator and then split off on both sides of the main line with this T. so i'm going to take this apart real quick put some tape around these fittings and then we'll get it installed into our main line so we got that set up there assembled just like i showed you 
and now we just need to pick a spot kind of in the middle of our main line here you can measure this if you want to be exact i usually just kind of eyeball it so about right here where i put that mark is where we need to install it so we're going to take our cutters here and just cut this main line in half right here and then we'll connect one end to this side of the t tighten it down there and we'll connect the other end to this side of the T and tighten that down. So our water hose hooks in right there and it's gonna feed all this main line tubing. So now that that piece is installed, we need to plug the ends of our main line tubing. So down there and right over there. So for that, we'll use these end caps right here. And I like these better than the figure eight clamps lately because you can easily remove this cap here and flush the system if you want. Also, it lays flat on the ground a lot better. So we'll screw that cap on there tightly because we're not gonna flush anything right now. We'll screw that on, tighten it down with the nut there, and that end is plugged. And that's it for the main line setup. Just takes a couple minutes to get that in place. The rest of the irrigation installation process will be dealing with the drip tape, hooking that into the main line. Before we can lay any drip tape, we need to figure out where our rows are gonna go. Now, I'm not quite sure how many rows I'm gonna plant in here yet, but I wanna put my rows about three feet apart with the stuff we're gonna be planting in here. Things like cabbage, broccoli, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts. So, I'm going to go get the wheel hoe and make a trench to put my drip tape in. We like to bury our tape. You don't have to bury your tape. If you've got another way of laying off your rows, go for it and do that. I'm going to make some furrows that are going to tell me where my rows are going to be, and then we'll know how many lines of tape we're going to need. So we've got our furrows made where our rows are gonna go. Now I didn't measure this off so it's not perfect spacing, but it's close enough for what we're doing here on this small scale. So these five rows right here are approximately three feet apart. Those down there are a little further apart. So I think we're gonna do two rows of broccoli here, a row of cauliflower, two rows of Brussels sprouts if I have enough transplants and I gave myself a little more space here because we're gonna be planting a variety of cabbage called megaton that's supposed to get really really big so I gave myself about four foot right there with that row and then we'll plant some more cabbage on this last row and you don't have to lay out all your rows and install all your tape at one time if you just want to plant a couple rows one day couple rows the next day you can just plug into that main line whenever you want as i'll show you in a minute so if you don't want to plant the whole plot in one day you don't have to now let's talk about drip tape now this roll here is pretty ugly because i had an onion fall on it and rot so it's got a little nasty stuff on the outside of the reel but this is a tape i've been using lately this ear tech p1 tape from drip depot i really like it seems to be some of the more sturdier eight mil tape out there now, there's lots of different types of drip tape out there lots of different brands you got your rivulus you got this ear tech you got aqua tracks by toro lots of different brands out there this is the one i've been liking lately so that's what we're using and in addition to there being different brands of drip tape, there's also different emitter spacings that you can get and different thicknesses that you can get. So I usually use only a 12 inch emitter spacing. That means it's putting out water every 12 inches. That helps me space out my transplants. For instance, these transplants today, we'll be putting them on a one foot spacing. But also when we're planting stuff in between the emitters like corn or carrots, beets, whatever, it puts out plenty enough water to cover those gaps. So I've always went with a 12 inch emitter spacing. They do make tape with eight inch emitter spacing. I think I might've even seen tape with a six inch emitter spacing. So if you're worried about those gaps between the emitters, you can find tape with narrower emitter spacing. Now, as far as the tape thickness goes, I mostly use the eight mil tape. I have used some 15 mil tape over the years, but it's mostly the eight mil tape I use. So the 15 mil tape is twice as thick as the eight mil tape. 
I don't like the 15 mil tape as much because it's a little more rigid. It's a little tougher to install the connections on, but it does last longer because it's thicker and you have issues in your soil. If you have issues in your soil with worms or stuff chewing in the tape, you may want to go with the thicker tape. I usually don't have any issues with the eight mil tape and I can usually get three or four seasons out of one piece of tape. Now today I'm not going to be pulling off this roll here because I have some pieces that I saved that we pulled up from previous crops out here in this garden where all the rows are 30 foot long. Now I'm going to have to trim them up a little bit, but they should be just fine. So we're going to use some tape we saved. We're not going to pull off this roll today, but it's pretty much the same process either way. So we have this piece of tape that we saved that's approximately cut to the length that we need it. Now our fitting right here is already installed. This is what we call a row start fitting, and that plugs into the main line right there, and then our drip tape connects to that. But I think I'm going to start using more of these that have a valve on them. So these don't have a valve, which means when you turn the water on, this tape's going to fill up. These here have a valve, so you can shut off individual lines, and that's what I'm going to be installing today. So the first thing we want to do is put our tape onto this little barb right here. And tighten that down make sure it's not coming off of there so it's it's secure then we'll take our hole punch which is going to punch a hole in this main line so we can insert this fitting and there's lots of different hole punches out there i really really like this one i got this one off amazon it's in that blog as well with all these other pieces and it just makes things so much easier so we'll go right here punch a hole till we hear it pop and then we're going to insert our fitting in there till we hear that pop and we're good to go with this connection right here so i'm going to do what i just did there to the other six rows and we'll stretch out the tape along the furrows and i'll show you how to terminate the tape at the end of each row now that we have our drip tape in the furrow let's talk about how we terminate the end of the tape so water's not shooting out of here and there's several different ways several different fittings available for doing this some people will just tie it in a knot I've always had pretty good luck with these, but some people have fits with these and they'll use something that looks kind of like what we use to plug the main line with. So for these right here, you have kind of a wide end and then kind of a narrow end there. So we just insert it through the narrow end and then we fold it over a couple times. And then push it through there and it just cinches down like that so that's the complete install really really simple now one thing i'm going to do one thing i always do before i start planting is hook the water up here make sure all my connections are secure and especially make sure i don't have any holes in that tape i'm reusing if you're using new tape usually no worries there but when we're reusing pieces of tape we've used in the past sometimes there can be some tiny holes in there that we need to patch or sometimes we end up just scratching that line and putting a new line there but we really can't tell there's any issues with a line until we hook the water up all right so we got our water hose hooked up here got the drip system on we can see those lines are inflated there doesn't look like we have any leaks at the connections or in the tape so that's a good thing now one thing I should have mentioned earlier when you're laying the tape down you want to make sure the emitters are facing up so you can see an emitter right there water's coming out of there there's another one 12 inches over so the way this tape is designed is for the water to kind of come out the top there and roll over the sides you don't want the emitters facing the dirt you want them facing the sun so now we're ready for some fall planting my little helper came out here to help me i don't know how long he's gonna last but we'll see let me go to the greenhouse grab our plants and we'll be ready to go so we got our plants right here we won't be putting all these in this plot today we're putting a decent amount of them in this plot you can see they're ready to go there got a nice root ball on them and we also got us some nature safe fertilizer down here titus is making sure we got enough going to take one scoop of that and put one scoop per row there and then we'll be ready to put these plants in the ground all right so we got our nature safe 855 in the furrows there and we're ready to plant now we're going to use the emitter spacing on this drip tape to tell us where to put our transplants like i told you earlier i mostly use a 12 inch emitter spacing so if we put a plant where every 
emitter is or where the water is trickling out at each spot along the tape will have a nice 12 inch spacing along the tape all this stuff broccoli cauliflower brussels sprouts cabbage does fine on a one foot spacing so that's what we're going to plant with the exception of the megaton cabbage that's growing or going to grow right here that stuff gets pretty big i think i may put those plants two feet apart so we're getting these transplants put down beside these emitters starting off with the green magic broccoli and titus is down there making sure we don't have too many plants in this row that we only get one plant per emitter all right buddy you ready to plant yeah well get down here and you can get down on that side how about you stand on that side i'll stand right here all right see where the water's coming out right there yeah. just put it in there cover it up like that okay can you handle that yeah all right let's see you do that one okay that one yeah so yeah so you make a little yeah. hole hold it up like that and put some dirt around it okay there you go okay I do this one. you do that one okay, okay. all right all right all right we got them all in titus helped me with those first three or four rows and then i finished out the other three there so i'll go inside and write this down in a little bit but for right now i can remember so we've got green magic broccoli here then we've got a row of imperial broccoli and we've got our cauliflower and we've got two rows of brussels sprouts right there so all those things are on a one foot spacing and right here we've got this megaton cabbage on a two foot spacing and then another row of cabbage here we've got the first half a variety called bravo and on the back half there a variety called capture and i'll probably come in here and run another drip line alongside these chocolate habanero peppers i was just overhead watering them but now that we've got a main line set up here i'll put a drip line in there to feed those as well now one of the reasons I wait until late September, early October to put these fall transplants in the ground is because if I plant them when it's still too hot outside, I have to baby them a lot to keep them going and a lot of times my transplant survival rate isn't that great. So it's not too hot out here today. It's probably somewhere between 75 and 80. I'm gonna let this drip run for a while and I'm also gonna keep a close eye on these this afternoon. If it starts getting in the 80s this afternoon, I'll probably turn off the drip and then turn on the overhead sprinkler just to give them a splash. That seems to help out those baby plants when they're really young like that, cooling them off a little bit. So I'm gonna keep a close eye on them today. Like I said, the forecast looks pretty good the rest of the week. I don't think we'll have to baby them too much. Now the other thing I have to watch out for is rabbits and that little patch of pine trees right there. I'm sure there's a few rabbits that was watching me and Titus planting that stuff there waiting till tonight when they can come chew off the leaves on those baby transplants there. So I'm going to have to keep a close eye on things at night as well. I'll come out here a couple times at night with a headlamp and the old 12 gauge and if we see any rabbits we're going to have to take care of them. And so this is all the in-ground brassicas that I'm planning on planting. We will be planting a lot more brassicas, but those are going to be going right here in our new raised bed plot. Things like kale, rutabagas, red cabbage, all those things I showed you on that last video when we talked about our planting map. So hopefully on the next video, we'll get the tops of these raised beds finished off i got a little bit of potting soil there got a little bit of mushroom compost i'm going to add a little bit of this native soil here as well mix all that into the top of these beds we got to put in our teas for our irrigation here run some short drip lines and hopefully we'll get these planted pretty soon so i hope you enjoyed the video today it was nice to get some fall planting done still a lot of fall planting to go but this is my favorite time of year to be out in the garden it's not too hot got a little breeze feels good out here and there's so many different things we can grow down here in south georgia throughout the fall and winter seasons 
And if you've started your fall planting, let me know in the comments below what you've planted so far and maybe what you've got yet to go. And don't forget, if you want to see all the links to all the pieces we use for our in-ground irrigation setup here, I'll put a link below to the blog on our website where we've got it all laid out. If you're watching on YouTube, be sure to check out our affiliate links below. A lot of great companies that we use in our gardens here at Lazy Dog Farm. Even got some coupon codes for some of those companies so you can take advantage of those discounts. If you did enjoy the video, be sure to subscribe, hit that notification button, like, and share. And we'll see you next time right here at Lazy Dog Farm. Oh, well. Mm -hmm. By the beauty of your life